Good afternoon. Um, so before we begin the second plenary session this afternoon, we have the very nice task of handing out a number of awards. And there are two uh, primary awards to be given today. Um, one is for the best article from the Icon Journal for 2017. Um, and this is an award we give each year. The second is the inaugural a book award of the Icon S Society. So this is the first time that the Society has announced and selected um, a book prize winner. Um, and we will be uh, handing that out um, now too. So I'd like to announce first the winner of the best article for 2017. And that um, has been awarded to Daniel Brinks and Abby Blass for their article on Rethinking Judicial Empowerment, the New Foundations of Constitutional Justice. And Richard Albert is going to accept on behalf of the authors. Good afternoon. The authors have sent me an email statement that I'm happy to read on their behalf. We are honored to accept this award from such a prestigious publication, and we wish we could both be here to accept it in person. This article is part of our book entitled The DNA of Constitutional Justice in Latin America, recently published by Cambridge University Press. We shamelessly hope you will all read the book as well. Our gratitude goes to the editors of ICON, not only for the award, but also for the excellent work they do to bring us all such great interdisciplinary research at the borders between international and constitutional law. We believe the journal is, or should be, a model for research on law and legal institutions today. Signed, Dan Brinks and Abby Blass. And now to announce and confer the award, the inaugural Book Prize Award, I'd like to call on Jeff King on behalf of the hardworking committee and the committee members who um, did, the hard, did the work that went into selecting um, this book to award the prize. Thank you very much. Uh, we are delighted to announce that the inaugural Icon S Book Prize has been awarded not to one, but to two books. And in time-honored fashion, I'd like to delay announcing which two books those are until the tension in the room is almost unbearable. I'd like to commence my delay tactic by telling you something about the process of selection and the criteria that were employed. I'm actually presenting the winners today on behalf of the jury that was chaired by Professor Dr. Anna Peters of the Max Planck Institute of Comparative Public Law in Heidelberg, as well as Professors David Law here at Hong Kong University and Joanna Mendez at the University of Luxembourg. Publishers and Icon S members submitted over 40 nominations, all of which were examined in detail, about 15 of which were read through entirely by all four members of the panel. We published the criteria in advance and simply put, although brilliance in, uh, on any aspect of any book might have been decisive, there was some preference for books that transcended national disciplinary boundaries which treated a mixture of legal orders, or to those books which addressed matters theoretical, doctrinal, empirical, and political all at once. One criteria that emerged spontaneously in our discussions is that we thought the book ought to be boundary pushing in some way. We decided that Yaniv Raznai and Nimr Sultani both produced books that were outstanding in exactly that kind of boundary pushing way. We congratulate both authors for each winning the 2018 Icon Society Book Prize. I'd like to say a word on behalf of the jury about each of these two outstanding books, taking them in alphabetical order. Raznai's unconstitutional constitutional amendments, the limits of amendment powers, is a deep and fluidly written book that outlines the intellectual foundations and legitimacy of constitutional limits on amendment powers. The book ranges not only across the worldwide universe of constitutional amendment limits uh, provisions, but he 
expertly provides deep theoretical treatment of a, or perhaps I should say the, central normative question for these kinds of provisions. The problem is this. Most lawyers think that the supremacy of constitutions as higher law is explained by it issuing from the constituent power, the power of the people, rather than the constituted power of ordinary legislation. The Constitution on this view owes its authority to the people or some other constitution-making power, and the legislatures and executive owe their authority to the Constitution. This is what Tom Paine's view was, as mentioned by Sir Jeffrey Ma yesterday. Now, constitutional limits on amendment procedures are a problem for this view, because amendment procedures look like the re-engagement of the constituent power, a way of recalling the people back to the design table. Now, if that were so, it would look like the constituent power of the past putting limits on the constituent power of the present. And that would be a significant dead hand of the past problem. But it is not, argues Rosnai in this outstanding book, because in reality there are not one but two forms of constituent power. The primary constituent power creates the amending procedure and it attaches limits to it, and the exercise of that amending procedure engages a secondary or delegated constituent power. Since it's delegated power, it's permissible for courts to supervise its exercise. And Rosny offers a deep theory of constitutional interpretation to explain what they should do when exercising that power. Now, all told, this book joins up deep theory, doctrinal subtlety, and an empirical breadth that exhibits exactly the kind of boundary-pushing interdisciplinarity that left a deep and positive impression on the jury panel. Now, whereas Rosny's book gives us just what we're looking for by casting light into shadows, Nimr Sultani's book tells us exactly what we don't want to hear. He does so by taking a philosophical hammer to a range of central concepts in constitutional thought and practice. In Law and Revolution, Legitimacy and Constitutionalism After the Arab Spring, Sultani tells us that settled understandings of concepts such as constituent power, legitimacy, revolution, and legality lie somewhere between innocent myth and devious distortion. Most of these ideas are premised on simplistic distinctions, such as that between constituted and constituent power that we just heard of, or between legal continuity and rupture in understandings of revolutions. Sultani argues these distinctions don't only fail to survive theoretical critique, but when they're used in actual revolutionary discourse, they conceal more than they show. They paper over the realities. And that matters, he argues, because these simplistic distinctions, which he calls binaries, actually can obstruct justice rather than assist it. Now, in this masterful study, Sultani dissects the theory of each of these ideas before illustrating how they fail to account for what happened during the Arab Spring. As a specimen of critical constitutional theory, the book is first rate. As a study pulling the legal curtain back on constitutionally significant events in the Arab Spring, it is riveting. And as an in-depth book combining both of these things, it is incontestably in the front rank of public law scholarship. Now, it was an honor for all jury members to serve in this process. We think it's indisputable that Yaniv Rosnai and Nimr Sultani can be described as having produced world-leading research in the literature of comparative public law. Congratulations to both authors, and I'd like to present the award personally to Professor Rosnai, who I believe is here right now. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, I haven't really prepared anything uh, uh, formal, so let me just uh, thank first the prize committee for the hard work, and I'm, I'm greatly uh, I appreciate this hard work you've done. Thank you very much. I want to thank this association, this wonderful society. It's a, it's a great pleasure and honor to know that we have uh, uh, such a wonderful and greater society to be part of a community, and yeah, it is really uh, um, uh, sorry. 
I'm deeply, I'm deeply excited. Um, I want to thank my PhD supervisors, Martin Lochlin and Thomas Poole, and all those who guided me during the doctorate studies and the postdoc, Professor Arnon Reichmann, Kim Lane Shepley here, uh, Sam Zakharov. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot from many of the people who are sitting here, and I'm grateful to all of you. And I want to thank my very good friend, Richard Albert, uh, with whom I had multiple discussions on this topic, and I've greatly benefited from him. And uh, well, finally, I want to thank my family, so my parents, my wife of Italian, my three kids, who gave me the, the energy and love uh, to do whatever I do. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.